Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing good. Um, so this is pretty much the first video that's gonna be um, really model railroad related. Uh, I told you guys that I'd be switching over for the winter. Um, kind of took me a little bit longer to get, in, to get into it just because I had some kind of later horn projects come up and then I just kind of had to wrap up some stuff. So here we are. Um, end of December, ready to uh, start the new year off with some projects that have been uh, waiting for quite a while. And I was initially going to kick it off with some locomotive projects because I have a uh, fair share of those sitting over here and up there. Um, but I kind of wanted to get into some maintenance of way equipment or some mow equipment that I've really wanted to work on for quite a while and get some things going with. Um, so what I'm pretty much starting with is just some of the, uh, my older Walders kits that I've... Uh, some of them I've started a long time ago, some of them I just haven't started at all yet. Um, some things are kind of halfway, some things aren't even there yet. And then um, we do have some some of their some of Walder's newer stuff pre-built, everything. So we'll basically get into one thing that I'm gonna be working on wrapping up here, and that's a, uh, a Russell snowplow. Um, started out as just the uh, generic uh, Russell snowplow kit, much you know, considerably older kit. Uh, these were being produced when I was a wee little lad, so they've been around a hot minute. Um, this one here is one of their newer releases from uh, a couple years ago. Um, Pre-built, uh, nice detail, straight out of the box. And I've basically been just kind of using that as a um, somewhat of a platform for some detailing, and then I've been working off of photos for some of the other detailing. Um, that C, that, or is it CGW, that is the Chicago Northwestern, one of their newer releases from a couple of years ago. Real nice stuff, pre-built. Um, I am going to be making some changes to this because I don't like one specific thing that they did on that. Um, this is the one that I've been working on. Like I said, started life as a uh, as an older kit. Let's see if I can get the box open here without setting you guys down. There we go. So older kit uh, parts, the good old instructions. Um, been modifying some parts like these uh, side shields. They originally came square all the way down. You guys can see I've cut those. Um, roof, cab roof details, uh, horn, snow shield for the horn, rotary beacon, and then uh, two different types of antennas. Um, and then the body of it itself. Um, let's see if I can drop the frame down. I don't have the frame secured in there yet. Uh, stock weight. Um, you guys can see I've added a uh, front coupler uh, through the use of a couple cool little uh, kind of kits, part, part details that they have here. Um, finishing models, I get a lot of stuff from them, and um, uh, Details West, those are two big companies that I throw a lot of money at. Um, but it's basically just so that way you can uh, apply a front coupler onto the Russell Snow Plows because uh, they do not come with one. Even the uh, newer releases do not have a front coupler. So um, went through that. Uh, you can see the tops just taped down right now so that way I could get the uh, coupler at the correct level. I uh, have a NMRA coupler gauge that I use for that so that way everything's uh, one standard size. Um, as far as the body itself, pretty much just um, been taking some time to shave off the molded on grab irons 
and replacing them with um, ones from Details West. Still have some work to do on that yet. Um, probably going to try and do a uh, instead of a roof mounted brake wheel we're going to try and do like a back mounted brake wheel not too sure um, if I'm going to do a high mounted one or a low mounted one and then um, of course we'll wind up repainting this whole thing I don't know if it'll stay Union Pacific or not um, if I could focus here so yeah other than that not too much um, as far as the bottom goes, I took the flanger and um, filed that down smooth and replaced the uh, little uh, steel parts that hang down for the flanging. Um, cut those out of styrene and um, kind of replaced those to make those a little bit more of a bulky detail. And just a couple other small little things that we have yet to do. Um, one thing that I made sure I did on this one, um, they come with older style trucks, like the uh, old friction bearing trucks, with the old bearing, the Hyatt boxes. Um, I'm upgrading them with uh, newer roller bearing trucks. And then um, with the uh, when they first released these kits, they came with a set of trucks that was uh, specifically uh, the, the bearings. They would have been a Hyatt box, not a roller bearing. Um, bearings were filed down and then uh, to allow the truck to turn because it's kind of a tight, tight clearance in between that and that. And my... <laughs> My very first one of these I ever did, I, I messed up on that. I did not pay attention. I was a little kid at the time when I put it together, uh, so it wasn't the greatest job to begin with. Um, but I uh, did not pay attention to see that one truck was filed down and one wasn't, and I actually put them on backwards, and I kept having issues with it derailing. And then I uh, took a closer look at it and see that I had the trucks flip-flopped. So... Um, and the reason, kind of the, one of the reasons I bring that up is because on the newer style here, they've done something a little different. They've cut uh, journals into the base of the plow to allow the uh, flanges to have a little bit more room. Um, but they, they have a much shorter truck frame. Um, a lot of you hardcore modelers will know exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, so here we have, well, let's see, that one's a little bit wider. So this is a pretty standard truck frame for these guys. And side by side comparisons, you can kind of see how close the wheels are together compared to the spacing on this one. So they've kind of found a way to um, work around the issues with um, close clearances by shortening the truck and um, actually it's it's kind of like a dummy truck there's just if I can focus on it there's just little bumps there where the uh, axles stick into so there's no longer any truck detail on that truck and um, well, for one that bothers me and for two the spacing on the wheels bother me because they don't line up the best with the um, the service doors on the side so I'm gonna end up replacing that truck uh, with something that's got a little bit more detail on it um, of course I'll have to shave down the bearing boxes that's just nature of the beast um, but you don't really see that um, and anybody else would be a uh, pretty minute detail that you're you know you, you tell the wheels are a little bit close together but you're not really gonna pay a lot of attention to that um, something that you guys are going to see a lot of in my model rarity is I'm really picky. Really, really, really picky. Um, I've been into model rarity my whole life. I've progressed a lot from start to where I am now. Um, I have some of the most detailed stuff out there. And I take a lot of pride and I put a lot of work into my stuff. 
So um, I'm going to fix that, put a normal truck on there, do what I have to to get it to work. And then um, I might wind up um, moving the brake wheel on this one just, just to kind of modernize it a bit. We'll uh, probably do a good weathering job on it eventually and maybe probably do like a patch job because um, I, I am doing modern day modeling so and I'm probably gonna put a uh, coupler uh, coupler box up front on this so there's just a little bit of story on that one although uh, other than that these are super nice um, the doors can actually fold out for plowing the snow back further uh, that's something that you don't really have the luxury on with these ones unless you do like heavy modifications. I'm not going to go through all that because um, I'm not really too worried. I'm not going to have any snow scenes. Um, I just like having the mow equipment around whether it's just getting shipped from one yard to another or if it's just going to sit on a siding and um, just sit there. I just want the stuff to look really nice, really detailed. They do have really nice undercarriage detail on this. Um, the flanger has really nice detail so we'll do some upgrades on that even though it's already a pretty pretty solid piece um, and then of course progress on this one I want to get this one done so that'll be a uh, high priority I've kind of started and stopped this particular project like two times now so hopefully third time is the charm and I can just get this one done and um, move, move on to the next one thing I am really bad at is I will start a hundred projects and finish one of them. So we're, we're going to, I'm probably going to have some of the same. I'm going to have like a couple different projects going on at the same time, but I'm really going to push for finishing them before I move on to the next. So, so hopefully I can kind of curtail that bad habit. Um, so you guys can actually see some actual progress. Just set that on there for right now um so along with those i only got a couple more of those so i'll probably put one on that and then i have um a couple more kits so i'll probably do one more and then two of them will just not have it unless if i um wind up purchasing more of those um this other little detail set here is um i know it says for the russell snowplow but it's actually for uh the uh, Jordan spreaders. Jordan spreaders for me, I love them. I, uh, I've gotten the chance to see a few in real life and um, I love every single one of them. They're just really cool looking, uh, real cool piece of railroad maintenance and snow removal tool. So I got these uh, the same time I got the, uh, the plow there. Um, these are their kind of newer release from a couple years ago where uh, all the stuff can actually fold out. Um, it's made a lot better with a lot better movable parts than what you get in the older model kit. Um, so I got had to get a couple of those just to kind of see how they're doing that. Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can use some ideas from these to enhance the old model kits. Um, I have tried a couple other things in the past. Um, but these are all the older kits. Um, you guys can see that's from 96. Um, I have another one that I got. It's got a uh, handwritten date on it from like 97 or something. If I can find it. Just kind of shows you the... Uh, yeah, there's 97, 12, so December. So dated for Christmas. It's kind of cool. So I've had these kits... For a long time uh, a couple of them I've gone back on eBay and bought a few of them but a lot, most of these I've had for just since I was a kid and um, and I just want to build them they're really cool kits I, I tackled one of these uh, when I was younger and I failed horribly I did get it together but it wasn't the best job I was still pretty I was still extremely young Still doing a lot of learning back then. Didn't cut the parts out the cleanest. Didn't really clean up some of the mold lines. Things didn't fit together too well. Or I just didn't put them together correctly. So 
Um, I have plenty of kits to redeem myself with. And then a couple that I've already uh, tinkered with. It's been quite a few years ago, so I'm actually going to go back and fix them up. I think it's these two right here. So, these two I started to tinker with and work with a little bit more on the actual functionality. And these things are completely in pieces right now. They're these are a couple more of those kits that I started and just kind of never finished. So, um, working with actually getting these to fold out by kind of increasing, um, kind of making a ball joint with a piece of styrene and drilling a hole in it. That looks a little messy. I still got some cleaning up to do. Like I said, I haven't touched these probably in... 10 years so um within those 10 years i've learned a lot more so i'm gonna kind of go back and fix up some things that i messed up on on these already even though these are way better than what i did when i was really little um and then we're also gonna uh combine these on a couple of them uh these are basically to turn um instead of having the bigger plow there it puts a really small low plow specifically for uh, doing like ballast work and not snow removal. So I wanna, I wanna do a handful of them with these uh, detail sets um, and you guys will see some more of that. Um, kinda show you the, if I could show you the picture. So that kinda shows you how they go on the front. And that's basically what we'll be doing. With a few of these, these two, like I said, I'm going to go back and kind of fix up some things that I'm still not too happy with. We're going to kind of take my newer knowledge over the past 10 years and apply that into these. So that way those don't turn into failures as well. So you guys will see a lot of Jordan Spreader stuff. Like I said, I love Jordan Spreaders. They're such a cool, such a cool piece of maintenance away equipment. Um, in my opinion, they just look cool. I have pictures of like a crap ton of them um, that I've just collected from over the years online. So we'll be working on some of those. I even have a uh, Overland Brass one that's currently in pieces. Um, you guys will see me uh, try to salvage that one. That one's going to be quite the project compared to these. So. Um. So you guys will see plenty of Jordan spreaders, snow plows, and then uh, these boxes and all this is all cranes. Um, we have kind of an older release, Athern uh, BNSF crane. Uh, that's what that boom car is over here for too. Uh, we're going to work on kind of modernizing it a little bit. Um, I don't know if I can really show this off or not. It's got older style trucks. We're gonna try and put some uh, roller bearing trucks on there. Not have the old Hyatt boxes on there. Um, these two are actually uh, powered. Uh, they're powered cranes. They're uh, much older Walders ones. And um, I got two of them. One's one C and W. One's just a Mo. With uh, Maryland Western, or no, it's just maintenance away, just the MW for maintenance away. And these two are powered, so we'll have some fun getting those together. And then f I have um, some newer released uh, releases of these that are actually put together. Uh, they're non powered, um, but it really gives me uh, some help on figuring out how to get the boom and all the strings set up. Um, having just a Nice baseline for some of that. So we have a un undecorated one, and then um, a couple UP ones. So we'll do some more detailing on those, get those up and going. Um, this is just one of the cars that I'm putting towards my maintenance away equipment. You guys will see some some of that stuff. I have some uh, Difco side dump cars. Uh, some flat cars, a lot of mow equipment that we'll be working on um, the next few months. 
And then you guys can see I've got some, some buildings going on there too. Um, so we might even carry some of this into the springtime, late, late spring, early summer, just depending on what I get done, what I feel like getting done. Um, <clears throat> like you guys saw in the last video, I have a handful of horn projects that I'd like to do um, in the spring and summer too. So, But I'm going to try to put some really good time dedicated into all this stuff. Um, as far as buildings go, we have some elevators that I want to go back and kind of fix some stuff up on. Uh, some of these survived the move a little bit better than others when I moved here. So some stuff did break, sadly, even though I tried to pack it as good as I could. Um, you guys can see a lot of elevator stuff kicking around over here. Some of the blast furnaces. Uh, those are some big kits that I'm working on. And then another elevator and just just parts and pieces for kits and stuff like that that you guys will see another elevator back there so but we're gonna kick it off with some mo equipment i love mo equipment it's really cool really detailed stuff uh, and then if you really take your time these kits even as old as they are uh, they they can be put together really well and even have a tiny bit of functionality I don't know if I'm going to shoot for functionality in all of them because that does take a lot of extra time and I don't intend on having every single one of these with the blades out and everything like that. Like I said, most of these will just kind of um, either be sitting on a siding or um, um, maybe do like a little maintenance away scene or something on the layout. Um, let's see, other projects. We have some flat cars that I'm going to try and use, Atherin Genesis flat cars. Um, we have some of these here. Uh, Union Pacific ballast cars. They have the older style trucks. I'm going to see about upgrading those. Um, those are not for maintenance use. Those are just in there because I can't fit them anywhere else right now. More for my steam stuff. You guys will see some of that stuff too. Um... I'll just do a quick recap over here. So, uh, pretty much it's all locomotives over here, some passenger cars as well. Um, this this whole row here, that's all building kits and stuff. Um, but most of everything that's over here is all locomotives, so we'll kind of hit on some of that if we have time. Um, a lot of my UP passenger stuff, all my UP diesels, steam, all steam stuff. And then uh, my Union Pacific Reefers, I'll kind of show some of that stuff off too here and there, just in spot videos, uh, just to kind of break up some of the uh, some of the updates on some of the maintenance away and whatever we get to. So, um, so sorry to the horn people. I know some of you are probably just on this channel just for the horn stuff. Uh, some of you are both into model rarity and horns. So, um, like I said, if you're just into the horn stuff, um, stay tuned because I'm not stopping horn content. Um, it's just going to taper way off while I kind of concentrate on some model railroad stuff that I've been putting off for quite a few years. Um, so hopefully uh, everybody sticks around. Um, really hope whoever is like a big time modeler uh, enjoys the content. Um, it's not gonna be the greatest stuff uh, Just because I can't really um, I wish I could do like time-lapse and stuff like that I just don't have the stuff to really do that that type of video work. So uh, you guys will just kind of have to put up with my My uh, update videos every now and then so um, Thanks again for all the support from all my subscribers whether you're a horn guy a model guy both Whoever if you're on my channel, I thank you very much for all your support the comments i read every comment on every video and i try to comment back um some of you i know on facebook or on uh, other means so um thank you so much as usual hope you guys are excited to see some of these kits come to life since they've been you know sitting around since like 96 <laughs> so um till next time uh take care